Hello and welcome to Kikao, your weekly guide on the big issues affecting Africa's agriculture. This week, we focus on climate change, that real and present global disaster that is keeping everyone on edge. We'll be asking, what are the impacts of climate change in Africa? And what can the continent do to cope with those impacts? We'll also be looking at Africa's position at the COP27, that global summit on the environment and climate change that this year will be hosted by Africa. We'll be talking about that in a moment with our usual panel. But first, there should be a focus research for the continent. We know what we have. We know what we lack. We should streamline our research activity towards what we lack so that to get what we want. Let's now join Dr. Kanisha Skanangire, the Executive Director of AATF, as he speaks to his panel for this week on the question of climate change in Africa. On Kikawa this week, we will discuss the continent's needs and hopes as COP27 draws closer. My name is Dr. Kanisha Skanangire. I'm the executive director of AATF. And my guests today are Dr. George Wamukoya, lead agriculture negotiator for the African Group of Negotiators, and COPEP uh, Dabugati, the coordinator of CADEP Non-State Actors Coalition. Brothers, you are welcome to this Kikao show. Thank you. Thank you very much. What would you say are the obvious, very obvious impact of climate change uh, with regard to food security on the African continent? I think Africa is faced with a very serious problem because in terms of climate change, we are the ones that are least contributing to climate change, but we are the ones that are worse affected by the uh, effects in the form of droughts, in the form of, uh, in the form of flooding, in the form of several climate variability. Our ecosystems are changing rapidly due to uh, these effects of the climate change, and it is affecting even the social life that we live, the way that communities live together with people. We're beginning to see a lot of conflicts um, owing to climate change. We're beginning to see a lot of uh, communities are not able to grow the crops that traditionally they've been growing over the years. And of course, they've studied the weather patterns and have understood it. But now these weather patterns are erratic. Mm. They, are not, they are no longer straightforward, so they cannot be able to work according to the weather patterns. And a lot of communities are also being displaced as a result of flooding, you know, and increased rainfall. So we have a lot of problems. So the impacts are being seen uh, on, uh, in our communities. Yes. And uh, it is not only about uh, Food insecurity. No, no. It no. goes much beyond. It goes it beyond that. It is change of uh, of diet and the cultural it's habits. Yes. It is also bringing in insecurity. And, yes. And, and, and some regions are even very vulnerable to that. And I, I know in many uh, summits and other conferences they have talked about Lake Chad region and uh, and somehow climate change could be contributing to the the whole phenomenon. Do you have some uh, some fact on that? Well, uh, yes, it could be contributing to the phenomenon mm. because the lake chart is drying, it's drying up. Of course, the yield in fish, the yield in irrigation around the um, lake chart basin is, is also affected by that. But then um, we know that, yes, that is part of it, but then there is also the social and religious part of the issues and the conflicts are around the lake chart. So we can't divorce it, it's a social construct. Yeah. There, yes. there are many aspects um, yes. which are somehow implicated. Yes. Yeah, George, is the continent, the African continent, coping somehow? Uh, what are the uh, 
resilience and adaptation mechanisms that the, Afri uh, the, the African continent is taking. Are, are we doing something? Are we, are we good at uh, the resilience or adaptation to climate change issues? No, thanks. Uh, no, the answer is no. Uh, the reason being that um, climate change has completely uh, affected the traditional approaches that we've used, and therefore farmers are struggling uh, to produce uh, under very difficult circumstances. And in most cases, farmers lose almost everything because of the onset of the rain. And sometimes the rain that would, would uh, come in three or four months uh, spread uh, comes in, in one week and therefore wipes out everything. Or if they survive, then the crops lose the water and, and therefore they, uh, they, they have challenges. Uh, and, and therefore coping based on the traditional approaches right now is, is very difficult. We have to find a, our, another way by which we, we get our farmers to not just cope, but to adapt and build resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the worst hit are actually the, the livestock uh, keepers. Mm -hmm. As you're aware, uh, a, a large part of the continent is uh, arid and semi-arid lands which uh, uh, usually is ha uh, habited by the pastoral communities. And these communities, for many years and centuries, they are used to migrating from one region to another uh, in, 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 in search of pasture. And that, those patterns were good because there was plenty, and, and therefore they could sustain. But now, right now, it's not possible for them and that's why I think you recently we had an incident uh, where the government of, uh, of Uganda had to uh, send away the uh, pastoralists from Kenya because one, there is conflict with respect to the resources, but also that led to an insecurity issue. And, and as a consequence, the, the government said, no, we can no longer uh, uh, have this. And, and that is the challenge that we're having in, uh, even in the negotiations, because we're saying the way climate change has, is affecting Africa, it's no longer possible for our farmers uh, to be food secure. And, and that means uh, most of our countries and the economies are going to import a lot of uh, food from outside. And the question is, where do you import the food when Africa has the best available arable land? Arable land. I think that is uh, very, I mean, co complicated, I would say. We are talking of uh, that vulnerability of our farmers. We are talking of pastoralists uh, who have a very serious uh, problem with their cattle. We are talking of the social problems which come out of it, including insecurity in those regions. So all that happened when we are talking of uh, sustainable development, uh, sustainable green uh, growth, uh, pathways. How do you think Africa will address those challenges related to its uh, green growth uh, pathways? Yeah, generally we have a challenge in the, in the sense that if you look at the way the, the, the climate change issues were to be addressed uh, uh, following the Rio meeting where the UNFCC it was adopted, it was very clear that uh, countries that are vulnerable, like uh, the continent of Africa, uh, is supported by, uh, for means of implementation, which is finance, uh, technology, and capacity building. Unfortunately, that has shifted uh, to, through the Paris Agreement, where now all countries, irrespective of those that are contributing the least, have to play a role in addressing the global challenge called climate change. Now, the challenge many of our countries are having is they, have, they are now required to prepare what we call long-term low emission climate resilient development strategies, which means they look at where would they be in 2050. And then they also prepare what we call nationally determined contributions where they set a target as to how much they are going to, to reduce in terms of emission and costing. Now, with that, then many of our countries have said, 
we are going to take some steps, but we are going to require support. Now, if you look at all the African, uh, uh, the, the NDC submitted by African countries, they have what we call conditional uh, uh, support and domestic support. Let me give an example of, uh, of Kenya. Uh, Kenya has its uh, national determined contribution, which with a target of 32%, which has been costed to 62 billion for the period between 2020 and 2030. And Kenya has committed that it is going to use domestic resources to fund 13% of the 62 billion. Mm. Now the question you ask, mm -hmm. where is Kenya going to get the 13% of 62 billion mm -hmm. to address climate change, which is an additionality mm -hmm. to the development uh, challenges that we have? Yeah. And that is a problem. But also, if you look at the international support that's expected, which is 87%, it's not flowing. Mm -hmm. So in effect, the economy is going to be affected because Kenya cannot put resources where it requires most because it has to demonstrate how it's contributing to reducing emissions. Mm -hmm. But also, it means that uh, uh, the, 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 we, are, we are transferring the responsibility uh, of uh, dealing with climate change to Kenya and the people of Kenya. And the people of Kenya. I, I think here we, we have, uh, I, I will just take what the, the, common, the common citizen of um, any of these uh, countries in Africa say. We are, not, we are not very much those responsible of the climate change issues, but we are taking all the burden of it. Yes. And then at the end they ask us, to prepare a plan. Yes. But that plan first should stop the flow coming to, 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 to here. So stop first to continue emit, emitting yes. uh, those things. And we can't. We know we can't. No, the, the, the plan we are, we are doing has so many things we don't have control of. So, and we are talking of key agreement. You talked about Paris agreement. Yes. So let's uh, take a break and when we come, Let's go to that Paris Agreement and see how it will help solve the problem. Yeah, that's good.